In this video, I want to talk about the confrontation that is taking place between Russia and the West in the information sphere. We often have these discussions about how the Russians are using information warfare to sort of try to target our societies and influence the discussions that are going on in the West. And if you're not sure that these things are really happening, then you can just read the comments to some of my videos. It's pretty clear that some of the comments are made by people whose job it is to write angry comments on the internet. Uh, it is really well organized like that in Russia. Uh, so we have these discussions about how Russia is using trolls and misinformation and things like that to influence our information space. But I think we also need to have a discussion about how we can influence the information space in Russia. Uh, what is it that we can do that will hurt Putin the most? How can we reach ordinary Russians and influence how they see the world? And these are important questions. I don't have all the answers, of course, because this is a discussion that is just starting up. But I do have a couple of thoughts. So. Let's talk about it. The first thing I want to say is that I don't think we should do the same as the Russians are doing. To a large extent, they're using what I guess we could call dark tools. So by that, I mean they use different types of misinformation and trolling and manipulation and those kinds of things. And it's very effective because it works very well in our open societies and with the kinds of social media platforms that we have where misinformation tends to perform very well with the algorithm. It creates a lot of engagement from other users on the platform, like real users. And it's a good way to undermine our democracies because it undermines the public discussions that we have and that are essential for democracy. And it, it, in, in some way, it replaces the notion that there is a right and wrong in the world. And it replaces it with a feeling that everything is super confusing, that it, it's just impossible to ever know uh, what is the truth about anything. So suddenly, it is impossible to ever know what is right and wrong, because there is no way, way, no way we can know uh, the facts about anything. And then that creates a kind of atmosphere where conspiracy theories can flourish, and it creates anger and resentment, and that can then lead to apathy and paralyze our governments. So essentially, it, it, it makes it impossible for us to make good political decisions. And all this is uh, things that um, misinformation on the social media platforms in the West can do. So it's easy to see how this can be useful for Russia and why they're using information warfare like that. But uh, it would not work if we do the same to them, because Russia does not have an open public debate. And all these social media platforms where you can do this, they're not available in Russia. And also, Russia is not a democracy. So there are some practical reasons for why it wouldn't work if we did the same things and created some troll farms and tried to influence the Russian information space with sort of anonymous accounts on social media. Um, but more importantly, the problem is that uh, the effect that we want to create uh, in the Russian society with an information campaign would also ha have to be almost the exact opposite of what the Russians are trying to do to us. Like, we don't want to create more apathy in the Russian population. We don't want to create conspiracy theories that can um, make ordinary Russians feel more powerless or depoliticized and that their opinion doesn't matter, because that's what the Russian state is doing already. That, that, that's exactly the kind of post-truth information space that Putin is using to solidify his power. And we don't want to be helping him. So what we want to do is the opposite. We want ordinary Russians to feel agency, to feel that it actually matters what they think and that there is, there is right and wrong in the world and uh, that they can take political action to change the things that they think are wrong. And what that means is that we need to focus on providing truthful and genuinely useful information to them. Information that they can't get from the state media and that they feel that they want because it is relevant and because it makes a difference. And that means that we need to think about what kind of message it is we want to send to the Russians. Because we're not going to be successful if we have a sort of preaching or a condescending attitude, if we tell them that they're awful people or that Russia is an awful country, or if everything we want to talk about is all the war crimes that Russia is committing and that all Russians are guilty. Because that's not really a message that ordinary Russians are likely to find useful in their daily lives. And they're probably not going to believe us when we say that if we say that this is the truth, because 
believe it or not, most Russians actually don't think Russia is an awful country. And even if they're against the war, they probably don't like being preached to. So if we want to have a good and effective information campaign, then that's not the way to do it. But we, we can actually get a pretty good idea about what to do by looking at what the Putin regime is trying to ban. I think that's, that's a good guideline because uh, that will tell us what it is that they don't like or what they're afraid of. And that actually turns out to be genuine journalism and the voices of opposition politicians. Those are things that the Putin regime is concerned about and what they're trying to close down. So my point is that we should not try to counter propaganda with propaganda, but instead we, if we want to win the information war, what we should do is to provide relevant, useful and true information about things that actually matters for the Russians. So that could be information about corruption or social injustice or political infighting or regional issues or environmental issues, all sorts of things that Russians care about. And the reason why we want to do that is that that is exactly the kind of information that can motivate the Russians to go on the streets and protest. And we have some very good news outlets that produce news in Russian. Um, the BBC has a good Russian service, for example, Deutsche Welle has one. Uh, there is Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty. They all do good work. And uh, then, then there is uh, Russian opposition media like Medusa, for example, which operates from Latvia. They, they also make very good journalism about Russia for Russians. But there is one source of information that I think many people in the West are not aware of, but that is actually really important and that I want to draw some attention to here, and that is YouTube. I think most people in the West don't realize just how important YouTube is for the information space in Russia, but it, it's huge. Uh, YouTube is one of the few big Western media platforms that have not been banned in Russia, and that's because the Russian authorities have still not managed to build an alternative to YouTube, and YouTube is hugely popular uh, among Russians, so it would be a big deal if it disappeared. So for that reason, YouTube actually plays a very different role in Russia than it does in, in many other places. It has become sort of a place where uh, many of the most talent, talented people, they will go there and they will create the kinds of shows that, that they can't create on Russian state TV. So uh, there are a lot of really good Russian YouTube channels that operate from abroad. So they live in Europe or in other places because they're not welcome in Russia anymore, but they have a huge audience inside of Russia and they do have influence. Uh, we saw that, for example, during the presidential campaign for uh, Boris Nadezhdin. Um, he was the guy who was initially allowed by the Kremlin to start a presidential campaign and to begin collecting signatures because they wanted to create the impression that it was a fair election and they didn't really think his campaign would be successful. But what happened was that uh, suddenly all these YouTube channels joined together and they started talking about Nadishtin's campaign and, and encouraging people to go and give their signature. And people started lining up and we had these huge lines of people who wanted to support this cause. So these channels make a difference in Russia. And I personally follow a few of them. Uh, I use them as important sources of information, both about Russia, but also about the war in Ukraine. So that's channels like Maxim Katz, Michael Naki, Objective. Um, I actually did an interview with Maxim Katz on this channel some time back, and I'll put a link uh, to it if you want to see what he's like. Um, one of the, the best military analysts um, out there that I follow, uh, it's Yuri, Yuri Fyodorov. I, I think he's one of the best, and he is on Alexander Plushev's channel for about 50 minutes every day. So these channels provide genuinely useful information and they make a difference because they have the ability to reach ordinary Russians. And that brings me to what I actually uh, wanted to talk about and uh, why I decided that this would be a good topic for today. And that is that the Russian government has taken some steps now to try to see if they can silence these channels. And I think that raises some questions about whether or not we think these channels are valuable to us and if we maybe want to help them so that they can keep doing what they do. Um, but what the Russian government is doing is that they're trying to target their sources of income because these channels don't have enough money. If, if, if these channels don't have enough 
money to sort of run professional level productions, then their influence in Russia will decline. Um, and these channels don't make money from YouTube because YouTube has demonetized all views from Russia. So they, they make money from YouTube, from, from ad revenue when people outside of Russia watch their videos, but most of their audience is inside of Russia and they don't make any money from them. So one of the ways that they get revenue is that they sell sponsorships. And those sponsors will be typically Russian companies that want to advertise to Russians. Um, but what the Russian government is now doing is that the state Duma is working on a law that will make it illegal for Russian companies to buy ads with so-called foreign agents. And uh, these YouTube channels and all the content providers are on the list of, of foreign agents that the Russian government makes. So, so it will be really difficult for them to continue their business. So, we have all these YouTube channels that have a big reach inside of Russia and actually have an impact. And they're doing exactly those things that the West should be prioritizing if we want to win the information war against Putin's government. Like they're providing useful, truthful, relevant information to ordinary Russians. And now they're under threat because Putin's government is closing one of their most important sources of revenue. And I think maybe it could be a good idea for the West to make sure that these YouTube channels have the money they need to continue making videos. Okay, I will end it here. If you found this video helpful or informative, then please give it a like. And also remember you can subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to click uh, to get the notifications when I upload new videos. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you again next time.